Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is uh, Columbus This Week. I'm Eric. I'm here with Trevor, and we're bringing you all the latest news, events, stories, and uh, otherwise interesting things that happen to you in your daily life here in Columbus. So, uh, yeah, right. Trevor, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's get started. Yeah. So, I uh, hear there's a, there's a follow-up to the mysterious unnamed warehouse <laughs> benefactor we had last week. You have heard, correct, and that is a new data center that Facebook is going to be building in New Albany. Uh, so, pretty cool. Um, I, I've read that it's going to bring about 50 jobs here to Columbus, which isn't, isn't a whole lot, but they're at least high-paying jobs, like 80k, 90k a year, so that's, that's cool. Um, yeah, along with... Uh, so... I don't know if you know, but Amazon. So they they've built eight, at least eight data center here. But um, between also, two or three data centers here in Columbus, they're dropping in like a billion dollars, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, they also so, Amazon also has one in Cincinnati, right? So they're probably. they're just storing up data. Centers I don't know why everywhere. anybody puts anything in Cincinnati. Or sorry, no, I didn't mean Cincinnati. They put it in Cleveland, and you put it you put just it, as bad. You put things in Cleveland because tech tech talent there is even cheaper than it is in Columbus, right? Relatively. Um, Cleveland does have Lake Erie, so at least it's got that. Cincinnati. On the uh, other hand, know. it's a shittier city with a higher cost of living. How the fuck? What, Cincinnati? No, Cleveland. Cleveland? Yeah. Is it higher than here? Yeah, it is. Well, yeah, but at least they have the lake. The lake counts for a lot. Like you, it's it's getting, it's, it's good to have like a natural go, thing. Going out and getting bit by sandflies does not justify your money <laughs> being you having effectively five thousand less dollars at the end of the year. Or does it? No, it doesn't. You can look at the lake all day. Every and day. Also, you have to deal with the fucking lake effect snow and the lake effect wind. That shit sucked. I, I like... love the snow. I wish it snowed every day. I'd be awesome. All right. I <laughs> that that was completely aside, but so let's 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 reel <laughs> yeah, it back. Any, okay, to the so topic. anyway, um yeah, it's pretty cool. So Facebook is uh they're gonna build a data center. Uh, a million square feet, I've heard, which puts it in probably the top twenty at least top twenty largest data centers. Uh, in the country, if not the world, uh, Columbus is a, it's a natural location for stuff like that, just as it's a natural location for any general transportation transportation stuff. So, uh, you why, know, do you, why do you say that? That's what's, just what's I mean, your argument. So, I mean, Columbus is uh, for for which one, both or just for why? Why would you put a data center in Columbus, Ohio, in particular? Well, I, you know, if you look at there's like land costs, for example, land's cheap here. Fair um, enough. And then on top of that, when you look at, so like you take Columbus well, and take take hold the, on. Okay, let, go ahead. Sorry, let me be specific. Um, I uh, I'll give you that point in that it's cheap if if you actually need tech resources. So if you I mean you can't right. just build a, a I mean it out in the middle of like nowhere fucking Kentucky. Um, yeah, so exactly. If, I mean, there's you, a balance here. Yeah. So if you actually like need a healthy supply of tech talent, it's relatively cheap for that requirement. Right. And then on top of that, um, as you well know, Columbus is well within 80, what, 80, 75 or 80 percent of the population of the United States and Canada or something along those lines. So having something that's kind of central-ish to everybody, whether you're in Chicago, Toronto, New York, or D.C., um, it just, I think it just makes sense to have another, because I mean, where else are you going to put I guess you could put it in Pittsburgh or something, but I don't know, you know, Pittsburgh sucks, so I don't know where you'd put it there, but um, you could put it in new york or you know dc or you know whatever yeah because that's i mean that's largely like what these data centers they're serving the east coast i mean obviously they're touching on like the midwest and stuff too or hold on let me let me rephrase that the great lakes region so you're also touching on those areas but it's just too expensive to put it you know in the middle of no you know out in like new york or dc or something like that where you can just put in columbus and you reach chicago and then you know, even like it, it, auxiliary cities like Nashville or something like that. So, so, so I think if latency is an issue, um, there is an added benefit too in that um, it allows you to serve East Coast and West Coast fairly proportionally compared to most East or West Coast servers. Yeah. Um, if you need to, if you need one place to serve both locations, then then for that use case, it's uh, I, I it might not be ideal, but it's better than better than yeah. A lot of I mean, I, you could put it like in Colorado or like literally in the geographical middle of the country or somewhere like that but the problem I, is I don't think you get yeah I'm, unless you're going to drop it in like Boulder there's just there's nowhere where that tech town exists right so it's it's a lot of, like if you if you look at a lot of mitigating factors I guess it makes sense yeah and clearly Facebook and Amazon agree considering you know 
they're paying people way more money than, than we make <laughs> to make these decisions. Right. So if you want to take the argument from authority, they know better than us, and they're putting them here. So or at least the argument from economics. I, and I I don't think um I I maybe it's already happened or maybe it's going to happen. I thought Microsoft was going to put a data center here too, but um that that might just be some hearsay that I've that I've heard. So yeah. All right. Well. Cool. We, you want to break out into events? Yeah. Let's do it. There is some good stuff coming up this week. Uh, this weekend in particular, um, do you want me to go? I'll go. I'll, so I'll just go like chronological. Uh, so Tuesday is a. They're gonna, so this is kind of like off our normal event, I guess type because a lot of times these are like festivals and stuff. But um, I want to give a shout out to Refectory who's doing a, a wine te- wine tasting. Uh, it's like ten for ten dollars on uh, Tuesday, August fifteenth from five thirty to seven thirty fantastic restaurant um and i don't even meet, eat meat so i can't even imagine how good it is for all of you like barbarians and stuff it's not much better <laughs> i think i've mentioned it before on this podcast but i think refectory is somewhat overrated yeah but um, yeah i mean I, any, yeah i mean I'm, I'm interested in the wine tasting i'm gonna go if i can but yeah uh, same here i hear i hear seating is limited that's true so hopefully uh so you know if you guys uh if you're if our five listeners are listening and they want to go to refactory uh trevor and eric will probably be there or we will be somewhere nearby i think um so probably cool. probably at cahoots yeah <laughs> all right so that's coming up that's this tuesday and then uh so both both of these next two events trevor are on the 18th and 19th um and this is well the first one i'm going to mention well actually both of them you probably see us both there uh, the Smart City Hackathon. So we we brought up smart cities and uh, the work that the Smart Columbus. Uh, but anyway, they, they host a, like a quarterly hackathon. Uh, so the location and time are too de- to be determined. But we'll we'll give you guys a link to their homepage so you can check it out and see when those uh, when that updates. Uh, I think Trevor and I will both be there uh, developing away or. Hacking at the keyboard. Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, Pre- ha- we'll bring up the like the hacker like hacker gift. typer hacker typer. Yeah, I'm just be like pretending <laughs> pretending we know what we're doing. Yeah, see that's so, that's the real secret. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh, well, it, it it should be cool. I mean, so they um, so smart Columbus they have a whole bunch of data from their like Internet of Things, uh, and I'm doing like a hand wave for our listeners who can't see us and who aren't stalking us. So I'm doing a hand wave right now. But they have like Internet of Things, a whole bunch of data. Uh, should be cool. Uh, they've already spun out a couple of random companies from it, which I think is fantastic, really. So uh, should you know should be fun. We'll be there, and then uh, the same 18th and 19th. I think it's Friday and Saturday at the uh, Bicentennial Park. They will have the food truck festival. So I think last year it was at Columbus Commons. I went, I went there. Um, we, like we grabbed donuts from Buckeye Donuts or something like that. Or I don't, I don't even know. I think we got a whole bunch of food. I gained like 25 pounds, but. Um, it was, you know, it's really good food and it's, it's cool to have all the, the food trucks and everything available. It's so. amazing. You can eat half your body weight in a day. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, they, yeah, so there's going to be like 60 food trucks or something crazy like that. So if yeah, you're, you should, you should come if you have any interest in food at all or trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you have interest in food, but, but definitely you know, trucks, but trucks do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that so, it for events? Yeah. That's uh that's all the good stuff that's coming up this, this week. So, and if anybody has anything, feel free to send an email to Trevor and let him know. All right, <laughs> so let's uh, let's talk about what's going on in the, the great community that is Columbus. All right. Um, so, the superintendent of ECOT... <laughs> How many times are you going to say Super Nintendo? I didn't say that. I didn't say it. Didn't you do will. It. You will. So, the ECOT superintendent, who... Uh, who, who basically said that if, if ECOT were forced by the state to pay back the $60 million, that, uh, that ECOT was, is, you know, going to face a death spiral and be done, he, uh, he decided to resign. Right. Or, or, sorry, retire. Yeah. Because he's got to, like, draw a retirement yeah. pay, obviously. Yeah. So, the, uh, so, I mean, I guess the, the story here is that no one is surprised they left. He's basically been like, if the state fucks up, this, then, then ECOT is done, more or less. Yeah. Um, and I guess he's just... He's, he, he doesn't want, he's, I think he's one of those people who just doesn't want to be, but have this controversy at the end of his career. Yeah, so for this, it's, it's likely, uh, the state's going to make them pay back the 60 grand, so. 60 million, not 60 grand. Sorry, yeah. sorry, 60 million. Slip of the tongue, you know. Easy, easy mistake <laughs> to make. Yeah. 
It's um, only like three magnitudes of order larger. But, uh, um, yeah, he's bailing out of there. I won't be surprised if you see some other big names leave because, it. I mean, at this point, it is looking like this. Stage. Oh, yeah, there's no way they'll pay back $60 million. They're done. Yeah, on, on the other hand... Um, it doesn't really matter. There's like K through 12, which I also went to because I did ECOT for a bit. I did, and then I did K through 12 for like the rest of my not high school career. Yeah. Um, but like it's these types of schools aren't going anywhere. ECOT in particular might be. Yeah. But I think that's just, that's that's the whole story. Yeah, I think this is uh, just in general with ECOT. I mean, it's it's done for. Like that's that's just like the one of the last few nails in the coffin so it's it's it's, it's as they say the tuttle mall of uh, <laughs> of schools, <laughs> of, yeah, online of, schools? Of, of charter schools yeah. yeah i mean you know like on one hand we need to find a way to support alternate alternative education methods um i don't you know i don't know for sure all the things that went went wrong with ecot but you know it's like yeah they're gonna shut this one down but there will just be more, and you know how are they going to effectively regulate and manage those? Who knows? Yeah, and I mean, I don't think I don't think you're seeing other schools targeted. K through twelve will be fine. Um, yeah, I can't remember the other big one. There's like three big ones in the state, but anyways, <clears throat> I don't think I don't think this decision is going to go farther than you thought. Yeah. All right. So what what else do we have in community? Uh, so there was uh, a recent genocide. On the side of a mile. I don't know if you heard. Um, I did. I, the, the I city genocide. Wait, wait, wait. Just allow me to say before you say anything. I completely support this genocide. I am in favor of this <laughs> genocide. In this case, I am pro genocide. So, I will. I will say before I say anything. I love animals. Anybody who knows me knows. You know, I'm a vegetarian. I do my best to minimize my impact on the destruction of life. But geese are shitty as hell. And I am not, I do not shed one single tear over the destruction of these monstrous creatures. They shit everywhere, especially where we work, and they are nasty, well, they're nasty because they shit everywhere. They're aggressive, um, there's, I mean, they don't, they just like fly in and then it's just like a big pile of geese everywhere and then it's just geese shit all over the sidewalks and stuff, so I don't even care. So anyway, the the city uh, killed like two hundred and fifty, I guess, uh, which is like a drop. It, it's a it's a drop in the bucket, right? It's it's a location specific thing. Um, honestly, I think I think a lot more need to be killed, like a lot. More. Well, from what I from what I've heard, when you if you like kill uh, it's like some number of them and like a spot that they regularly migrate to, then they like don't come back because they remember like. They remember seeing the slaughter of their brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and children and all that stuff. So they just like don't go back to that spot at least for a while. So, but the thing is, like that's a that's a spot. We're talking Columbus, Ohio. Oh yeah, I mean spots. they yeah there should be geese uh, execution squads like throughout the state just running around shooting these things down. But I was surprised to find out, and you might you might be interested uh, or surprised to know this too. But there's actually a goose hunting season, and it's like a week yeah. long, and you can bag five a day. Yeah. Which means that, you know... But I can't go shoot geese, like, at the side of a mile. You can't, but... Can I do it with a pistol? What? Can I do it with a pistol, or do I have to use, like, a rifle? What do you mean? Like, can I just start shooting geese with a pistol? Like, they're uh, just, oh. like, laying on the ground, I'm just going out there and just capping them? That I don't know. I I, I, know <laughs> I it, doubt it. <laughs> so I've, I've, looked, I've looked this up, and apparently in some cities they actually allow you to bow hunt. Uh, that geese. would be fun. Yeah. I don't imagine it would be much sport. Like, the geese aren't going to put up much of a fight. Yeah. I don't think they'd even run. Like, you'd shoot one with the bow, and the rest of them would just kind of stand there. And then probably, like, charge at you aggressively, and then you just kick them away. But anyway, so that that's, uh... So, I... Jar, I, I don't know, have you been down to the Sayo in a while? Yeah. Recently? Yeah. Well, not recently, but I have okay. been. I... Uh, aside from... I mean, the, the geese problem... The goose problem. Geese problem. Uh, it's... I mean, it's not like the end of the world or anything. Like, if they never did anything about it, nothing real bad would happen. But it is nicer to, like, you know, it's like I ride my bike down there or, like, I go for a run or something like that. And, like, it, yeah, it's together people and stuff. And it's like, yeah, it'd be nice if I, like, didn't have to spend all my time making sure I didn't, like, step all over this, like, nasty green goose shit, like, everywhere. So, so. <laughs> one, of, one of my thoughts on this is that, like, I, I mean, I hear people talking about how inhumane it is, but I, I was thinking, if uh, if we had human beings running around doing the same shit that the geese were doing, like, they would be thrown in jail. 
Well, unless, or, or unless, unless, unless you lived on the West Coast, and then if you, like... So, <laughs> one of my friends was telling me in Seattle, they, like, tried to power wash the, like, homeless people feces from, like, in front of City Hall. And then all these people came out and started protesting against it because it was, like, microaggression. So, it's, like... What, I mean, I don't even know what microaggression is. It's, like, mini-aggression. It's, like, these little aggressive things. I don't know. It's, like, being passive-aggressive. But... Well, I mean, I think, so I think in some cases it's, like, being offensive or it's, like, being... What's a, it, you know what's offensive? Shitting everywhere. So, so here's the thing. Um, I think, I think microaggression is, is, like, a weasel word because it takes, it takes, like, offense or it takes, like, um, uh, what's a good word? Um, it takes, like, an insult or it takes, like, you know, something, something that you would consider, like, a bad, like thought or thing that people do yeah and it turns it into um i mean and or it turns the uh the, the language part of it into an aggression yeah and so like what do you do when somebody aggresses against you i don't know fight them back i guess right like ag aggression usually implies like physical violence and yeah. people tend to respond to physical violence with physical violence right and so i don't like this little linguistic trick where we're calling we're calling what are usually words or like even even like actions you know like the way somebody looks at somebody else yeah we're, we're referring to those with the same with the same lingo we typically refer to violence right and yeah it's nonsense i but yeah i'm not a, i'm not a fan of that either it's it's like this i don't know it's especially like, because you, you get nuanced and like you try to hide more or less like what you're actually trying to say because when you say things like microaggression, like, that's just, I mean, that's just bullshit. That's all that is. Yeah. I mean, if you want to call it aggression, call it aggression. But calling it, like, microaggression But that's the thing. Every, like everyone this. knows it's not it's not an aggression. Well, everybody except the people who think that it is aggression because they're dumb. I, I don't even think those people. I don't even. I, I think you would be very surprised. Because I, I'm willing to bet that those, those people, it's just so far, it's, it's so crazy. And it's so far out of, like, the norm and the experience of, like, being a normal person in like a normal city like Columbus or something that you, you think they gotta know. I, I think they don't. I think they're just crazy. Here's the thing though. If somebody aggresses upon me, I'm going to I'm going to engage in violence to make them. Trevor, stop. I'm gonna microaggress on you later. No, but seriously, if, if somebody <laughs> if somebody aggresses upon me, I'm going to use violence to make them stop. Right. But so, what if it's a microaggression? So it's like they're aggressing you, but it's just a little bit. But that's the thing about uh, microaggression. <laughs> microaggressions aren't aggression. Right, it's stupid. That's the thing. They might be like big offenses or like, I don't no, know. No, they're, they're micro offenses. Or so like, they're like or not like, even <laughs> regular sized. Or like big put downs. Or I mean, the thing is, they're not they're not real aggressions, right? Oh like, yeah, you're not, you're preaching the choir here. I think it's my, yeah. If, if I microaggress upon you, your person is safe. Your feelings might not be. Oh, yeah. You know, your your sense of self might be hurt or something, but your person is fine. Yeah. Well, I think I, think, I don't know, man. I might microaggress. You know, you might get microaggressed. And I, I think I think using the word aggression here is just wrong. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's just it's just a it's outrage politics and people are just you know it's basically stupid. So anyway, so, so we went from geese to microaggressions. Yeah. Well, it's like what, are we microaggressing the geese when we like? shoot them or like you know you get like a big hose and you like spray their poop away or like, no i think i think like he's being like microaggressed and like they're they're entitled to like come bite us because like we're responding with violence towards their like defecating all over everything that's great i think i think when you throw or when you uh you know launch a missile through a goose's heart you you didn't microaggress you just aggressed it <laughs> And honestly, if the if the goose wants to like aggress back because you you know it's it's, it's justified. I mean, you're trying to kill it. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, all joking aside, I, I do feel bad though about the like the geese and stuff because as annoying of creatures as they are, I personally like I I would just like to not see things die. But you know, but I don't really know what else they can. I mean, I don't really know what other solution they can have. It's just, like a giant waterway. It's more or less safe from predators, so obviously they're gonna like land there so unless we have a preventative <laughs> measure we have to take active measures to uh to we should just fill like the side of the mile with like cougars or, or bobcats and they can just like walk around and then just like the geese will be scared and they won't come by and then what about can, normal like, cats i bet normal cats would fuck a goose up Ooh, i don't know geese are pretty they're pretty big and strong hmm. like a pack of cats for sure but like one on one, I don't know. I think cats are a little bit too skittish. You know what? You know where there are no Canadian geese? Canada. I was thinking Russia, where there are packs of wild dogs. 
running, roaming the streets. Well, yeah, but that's like a, that's own problem, though. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not saying it's better. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Anyway, so let's let's move on from these stupid geese. Um, so on a, a less serious note, the Columbus Police Union votes no confidence in the mayor and some of the uh, associated, you know, politicians. And to which I say. The next time a police officer stomps on somebody that's head handcuffed on the ground and you vote no confidence, you should, like, I don't know, go to the mirror and look at yourself and then just ask yourself what you're doing with your life. Because that's ridiculous. I mean, I vote no confidence for all of these people. Everyone involved. Yeah, including the police. Like, it, it's it's ridiculous. So, the, the fraternal order police... So, I, I, I get the, like, the technicality thing that they were annoyed by. So... Basically, they were annoyed that there wasn't, like, a complete review, like, as part of, like, the standard operating procedure for the officer who stomped on this guy's head. Uh, you know, they didn't, like, go through, like, the entire process. But uh, last I checked, there's a video of a guy handcuffed to the ground, and a police officer basically comes by and just stomps on his head. There's no need for a formal investigation. You have a video of this, it, this jackass stomping on this guy's head it doesn't even matter what the guy did you already like he's already handcuffed to the ground so the you know the the police union is basically just being a bunch of idiots about this so so here's something i don't understand though um and maybe maybe you can enlighten me you're a little more liberal as far as uh or at least uh in this case you're a little more pro-union than i am i think yeah i mean just in maybe general I don't yeah know. so why why is it that um that so many people who are who are generally so pro-union seem to seem to be such bitter enemies of of the uh, police union what i'm not well for me the issue with the police union and i don't think this is really it's such a union thing is they protect their own even at the cost of serving the public so the 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 job of the police is to serve the public period so it does like i don't care if the police what turn a little more oh i don't yeah so i don't care if the police union want to protect police officers i don't care if they want to have a union uh that's fine like i don't care about that but when you're putting the union above the actual job of being a police officer which is to protect and serve the community that's what i have a problem with and it's even more so a problem because the the police uh i mean that's like a it's a public service so i don't i mean some steel workers or something have a union they like have some bullshit going on. I don't really care about that. I mean, I, I, I can care maybe if it affects me, but like I'm paying tax dollars for the police officers. We're, we are giving them a monopoly on violence in, as part of our community. Like that's, that's, you give them that responsibility. And so when they act outside of the responsibility, nothing else matters. It doesn't matter what the police union says. I don't care what the mayor says. I don't care what the police chief says. I don't care what any dipshit says. What I care about is did they do their job correctly and if not why and that's that's my that's my problem with the police union is like at times they just say well we don't care like i mean it's clear like they should they should immediately distance themselves from this officer but when they're not doing that that to me that just says we're protecting the officers we don't really give a shit about protecting and serving so i think um for all of your points except for the monopoly on violence this this isn't this isn't a problem that's unique to the police union this is a problem that happens across every public service union. This happens in healthcare unions. This happens in teachers' unions, and it happens in police unions. Yeah, the unions. I mean, no matter where they are, and I do think it's different when they're providing goods versus providing services, especially public services. Yeah. But unions, no matter what, they will protect their members, and they're they're basically politically in a position where they have to. They have to right. protect every single member. Otherwise, members are going to start asking the question, "Why are we paying for this?" Right. Why are our salaries? De I mean, why are our salaries being depressed because we're in a union? Yeah, I'm. I'm not a fan of public unions in general, anyway. So you're not really going to get much argument from me here. Although I also, so I'm not a fan of them, but I, you know, I I have to support their more or less right to organize, or at least as far as the law is concerned, they you know they have that right. And if you want to vote and take that, I don't want to say take that right away, but if you want to vote and say that people who work in public office can't unionize, that's you know that's an entirely different conversation, I think. But so you're not going to get a lot of argument for me with public unions because they're services that we pay for with tax dollars. And it's it's not, I mean, it's just not as simple as like, okay, well, if the union at Factory X protest, like, I can just not buy their product. Like, I don't have a, I, I can't choose my police force, right? right? 
so that that's what I have an issue with is when they org when you know gener- generally speaking when public unions organize like they they have a they, you know just, well I guess like the police officers have a monopoly on buying but public unions have a monopoly on whatever service they're providing I I don't have an alternative and right. that's that's what that's what I don't like about it so yeah so I mean I think I think my big problem with this then is this this thing I'm seeing where um, the police union gets called out a lot. But I've seen similar shit happen with teachers' unions. I've, oh yeah. I, I mean, my my own mother just dealt with a similar issue where she was up. I mean, where her word was up against the word of um, a healthcare union employee because she's like a healthcare union manager person. Sure. Um, and so this this isn't just a police issue, but the the police unions are the only ones that ever make the news. Like this this is a, a commonly recurring issue that that seems that everyone seems to want to address as a problem with the police. And I think fundamentally, it's a—I mean, it's a problem with public service unions. Yeah, I, I mean, the the re- i think the reason the police make the news is because it's the police. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, they can literally like shoot you in the face outside your house. I mean, they can go if you're handcuffed to the ground because who knows what you did. They can just go stomp on you, and then the police union goes and protects them. So to me, that's different. Like a teacher, if like some teacher walked up and hit me, like I'll knock him out. But a police officer, if they walked up and hit me. If I knocked him out, I'd probably get shot. So, but if if healthcare orderlies, you know, are abusing patients, I mean, you have a very similar situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a it's a little more insidious too, with versus like the over violence that a, a police officer can inflict. Right. Whereas, you know, so and that's the sort of the uh, the position my mother found herself in, and so I just I I've been seeing this double standard as far as this this whole no confidence yeah. thing, and it's it's kind of annoying. Um, but I mean, I guess that's my thoughts on that. People should just treat other. I mean, I just, I just would prefer people treat other unions like the police unions and realize they're all kind of shitty right now. Yeah, and and again, I'm 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 pro union just because I think in general corporations over. I, I think it's not like a. I don't think it's like a good evil thing. I think it's just the nature of a business that you tend to drive wages down because of shareholders, whatever. Um, I, actually, I think public companies might be kind of a huge problem in general. That's way bigger topic than we have time to discuss here. Yeah, but it's it's off the rails. Yeah, so um, I don't I don't have a fundamental issue with with unions, and I love things like co ops. I think they make a lot of sense. Just in you know, just in general, as an idea. I don't know you know specifics or anything, but um, but yeah, I mean something like the police union. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not like anti police or anything like that. But it's like, come on, you guys, you have this guy handcuffed. He's on the ground. There's like 30 police officers there. Then you're gonna go kick this guy. Like, come on. And then you're gonna get mad that the mayor is like, yeah, like we should have fired this guy. Like, what are you thinking? Like, you should have came out and said, I mean, you you need to ostracize people who are bad apples, or otherwise you're gonna your organization's gonna be infested with those kind of people. At the end of the day, though, it's not gonna happen. It just won't happen. So don't yeah. don't look for it. The FOP is not going to burn one of their own. Just don't expect that. Yeah. I know. So. Right. I know. I just want people to be decent, and I'm never going to get right. that. So, what are we looking? What, <laughs> what else are we looking at in community? Okay. So, next thing, uh, next thing coming up, kind of cool. So, you know the area next to uh, Huntington Park where the Clippers play? Yep. There's a huge, it's like 23 or 24 acre uh, area right there, which is like nothing's really going on there. There's some parking, but yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of an abandoned mess. Yep. And apparently we are looking at a new development in that area, which I think is pretty cool. So from what I've seen, there's a plan to take that, like that space. So those 23 acres and turn it into like a luxury, they, they call it resort style living and I call it like LOL living, but Basically, their plan is to turn that into like a resort style, you know, community for people who have enough money to afford that kind of stuff, which is fine. Like, yeah, to me, that's all good in any way. Like, I'm, I want more people moving and spending money and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, so they're basically going to turn that into like a giant apartment, mixed use development, pools, and all kind of stuff resort, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's so, fine. I mean, it's new development. A lot of that happening downtown. Yeah. It's uh, I mean, so it's like right next to the arena district, uh, which is cool. I gotta, I have a, well, I'll we'll give a, a link to it. So you guys, you know, that our listeners, uh, all three of them, they can read about it more. But they're gonna, they're looking at like a couple of like uh, twelve to fifteen story condo buildings and all kinds of stuff like that. So that's cool. I'm, you know, I'm 
Um, there's a parking garage, which I'm not happy about, because I think parking garages suck, but at the very least, they're at least, you know, building stuff closer closer to downtown, so yep. um, cool with that. And we'll, we'll have a, you know, we, I mean, we could talk about this, but we talk about downtown stuff all the time, so for our listeners, just check out our, uh, our link. It's just goes over the proposal and all the stuff, what they're going to be doing down there, and uh, yeah, pretty cool, so... Never, I won't be moving in there because I'm poor, but... Yeah, that makes two of us. <laughs> All right, All right, so should we break into tech news? Let's do it. Oh, man. What a day. What a week. Yeah. Um, so, Google is planning on contacting every single uh, major publication that has really annoying advertisements that, uh, yeah. that, that you know, comes through Google. Are you sure are you Sure, the dispatch fits this criteria here? Because, I, I mean, I don't know. Hey, Eric, could you refresh the dispatch for me right Oh, now? let me do that and pull up, like, 100 megabytes of bullshit. <laughs> and only for it to tell you that uh, that you've, you've exceeded your limit of 10 oh, articles God. for the month. It's, it is one of the worst websites in history. But, probably. hey, if you register, you can get five additional articles a month. You can read 15. Really? That's what the, the limit is? It's like, you yeah. register... Yeah, that's stupid. I don't understand, like, dude, I mean, this is an aside. I just don't, like, who, what are people thinking? I, I just, like, what is the point of even registering? Like, okay, so you register and I give you a fake email address and a fake name. Then what? Like, I mean, what was the point of all that? It was just, I mean, it's just nonsense. Like, they, want the, they want the ability to spam you, that's it. But I'm just going to give them fake email address. So, like, uh, but not everyone will. So are most people dumb? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Yeah, so most pe- oh, it's not that they're dumb; it's that they're not technologically literate. That's it. But I think I think we're getting a little bit off the rails again. Um, well, yeah, I, I said as right. an aside. But. So so here's here's the big story. Google is reaching out to everyone who does all this terrible advertising bullshit. You know, throws popovers in your face like, hey, hey, if you want to click out at me, say that you know you're a stupid piece of shit that doesn't want to subscribe <laughs> to my newsletter. Yeah. Google is contacting all of them and being like, stop it. And presumably, after they do this, they're going to implement some kind of punitive measure. Good. I think it's great, because you cannot... I mean, at this point, you cannot fight Google. Right. Like, they are the search engine. If you try to push back against Google, you you will fade into irrelevance on the internet, basically. Right. Now, there is some... You know, they do have to be careful with doing that, because then that can be the cause of antitrust lawsuits and all that stuff. So they have to... They're already. They, they have to. They have to use a soft stick. They can't just ban websites that look bad. Oh, they're not going to ban them. They're going to. What's going to happen? And I mean, we've we've seen Google do this all over the place. They're going to use an algorithm that, as one of its criteria for the uh, for the search page rankings, is going to be whether or not they comply with what Google considers friendly advertising. Right. And so, if your advertising is not friendly, if you're the dispatch. They're, they're going to make your page rank lower. Yeah. And maybe when somebody is searching for some local Columbus news, the underground comes up before the dispatch. Yeah. And Which so, is good. Good. Yeah, and so what's going to ha- happen ultimately is the dispatch is going to have to change their policies. I think that's the end result of this, and, and that's why I think it's good. Yeah, I, I hope so, because their website's horrible. It's just terrible. It's, I'm, I'm not a fan it, of Google playing Big Bank, you know, but, playing, yeah. playing monopolistic overlord, but, I mean, this... This is one of the better uses of that that uh, yeah. privileged position that they're in. Yeah. The just so hopefully somebody from the dispatch is listening to our podcast, which is very unlikely. But uh, if you are, you should know that your website is terrible. Uh, anybody, I mean, all you have to do is just go to dispatch.com and there's like 35 pop-ups, and it's like sign up now. Like, oh my god, you've only got like one of you have like one of zero articles left. Like, you don't even get to like look at articles and stuff, and it's just. Like, you look at, like, the sidebars, and it's all these, like, trash, like, advertisements and stuff. And I guess people will click that, because I don't, like, if I, if I, I look at that stuff, and it'd be, like, so, I don't know, O.J. O. Simpson's, like, part of the Knights Templar or something retarded. And you, you see that, and it's, like, why why is that on here? It's supposed to be, like, my news from, like, my city and all this stuff, and then it's just this garbage. And the ridiculous thing about that is I have Firebug open, right? Firebug is a debugging tool for... for developers for Firefox. Right. I have Firebug open and it's showing me that there is 42.3 megabytes. Like that's the web page. That is the size of the shit that you download yeah. in order to have the dispatch page open. Yeah. And what? then most the vast majority of that's just garbage. Garbage. Yeah. You know what I care about? I care news? about the like 300 
kill Are you sure? Text. Are you sure you don't care about O.J. Simpson being part of the Knights Templar or somebody getting a facelift or like click here to find out how you can use X, Y, and Z to up your other thing or something stupid like that? You sure you don't care about those things? So I just want to apologize <laughs> for our listeners who heard that uh, that beep from my phone. Apparently, at some point during the conversation, I said something that sounded like "OK Google," and my phone was triggered. <laughs> It was was it triggered as a microaggression? No, I mean like <laughs> the uh, the voice command thing was literally triggered. Yeah, I I, I understand. Good. I was, ma- I was, make- I was making a funny. <laughs> I'm just so sarcastic, you can't even tell. <sighs> anyway, so uh, in related Google slash tech slash um, microaggression news, there's an article in the New York Times, an op-ed. I wanted to publish just because. So. You know, for our listeners, I think anybody who is listening probably already knows us. So, uh, we're you know we're both like Trevor and I are both engineers, uh, work in software and all that stuff. And so they they published an ar- article on the New York Times, and I, I'm a subscriber. I like Trevor mentioned earlier, like I lean more towards uh, the liberal side of the world. But uh, so they had an article called "Text Tech as in Technology: Text Damaging Myth of the Loner Genius Nerd." So. There's some bits and pieces, I think, you know, if our listeners should read this, then um, I guess pause right now, read this article, and then come back and listen to what we have to say. But one of the things that really struck me was towards the end of, uh, towards the end of the article, there was a quote from, you know, so they were, they also obviously got their own sources, some other people had their own things to say and all that stuff. But, uh, so the second to last paragraph says, the nerd identity is really damaging to women. But it's also damaging to minorities and to a lot of men who don't want to subsume their identity in that. And I I actually found that pretty offensive. What what the fuck does that mean? Well, yeah, not only does it, is it meaningless and stupid, I think it's kind of offensive because what it's saying is people who have, so, uh, you know, there's like a nerd stereotype, right? You, what you can't have a you can't be a nerd if you have a vagina is that was yeah is that, is that the it's implication? offensive it's I mean it's literally saying that women can't like be nerds because apparently you have to be a man to be a nerd that doesn't make any sense that's like anti engineering anti intellectual let, let, it let makes me, me so mad to read stuff like that let me think of what comes to mind when I think of nerds I think of D and D I think of video games I think of comic books I think of like programming yeah. I think of nerdy shit yeah exactly I mean. Yeah, like, the ten, historically at least, and I don't think this is going to stay the way forever, but those things have been male-dominated, but they've never been exclusive to women. If anything, nerds are like, oh my god, there's a girl here? Like, how can we, like, wh- let me teach her all my, all my everything that I know in my life? Like, that, I, I don't get the, I, like, I just don't see where this is coming from. And it's, it's stuff like that, just, it just kind of makes me mad, so. On, on the other hand, keep in mind, I think, I think the people writing these articles, by and large, don't have perspective. Oh yeah, they're definitely they don't know what they're talking about. Generally, like generally sure. they tend to be they tend to be journalists, which for better or worse, right? They live in their own sort of bubble. Yeah. They don't they don't you know live in technology. They're not fucking. How many of their friends are nerds? Right. And and they're complaining about a nerd problem in an area where everyone's a nerd, basically. Right. And right. I mean, what they're yeah. Anyway, my so, my team is fifty fifty men and women, and I, the the women are just as nerdy as the men. I don't exactly. I don't like. There's there's no point to be made here. Yeah. So here's another another quote from the article, and uh, this kind of riled me up in addition, and it's also towards the end of the article, but it says, uh, when engineers build products with empathy, it can seem like magic. Technology seems to predict what people want before they know they want it. That was part of Steve Jobs' genius. Just look at the number of people connected to, to their phones or a child using an iPhone for the first time. you got to be shitting me. Like, it's basically what that's saying is, is that, you know, the team, like the teams that built the iPhones, like, it's like somehow they were all like non-nerds, not, they were all like women, minorities, and like nobody there was a nerd. Are you kidding me? Like, have you ever tried to write code in Objective-C and you're going to tell me that somebody who's not a nerd is going to sit down there and do that? No way. These people have no idea what they're talking about. And it drives me crazy. It's like, it's, so when you talk about like Steve Jobs is genius, and I'm using air quotes here. They just made a good product. They didn't care. There, there wasn't. There, there's no mindset where they say, "Well, we need to make sure we have X amount of women and X amount of uh, white guys and X amount of minorities and X amount of whatever uh, to make sure that this product appeals to everybody." They just sat down and made a damn good product, and they didn't care what was between your legs or what your what your skin color was. 
And right, what drives me crazy their is their target audience was like humans. everybody. Yeah, exactly. So when you when you say, you know, when engineers build products with empathy, what you're trying to say is that nerds can't like you, when you and then later and you talk about like nerds, you say that nerds can't build products with empathy, and then you use an iPhone as an example, but the iPhone is built by nerds. Like no, there's no there's no casual person can sit there and design hardware or design the software that runs something like the iPhone. And it, it just makes me mad because I think it's dismissive of people who spend a lot of time and a lot of energy and most of their childhood, really. Like, guys like Bill Gates who are like your... You, when you think a nerd, like, that might be a person you think of. Like, he started programming when he was, like, 10 years old, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. that's a nerd. Like, that's what yeah, being a nerd I'm is. The, I'm in the same category. I started when right. I was, like, 12. Yeah, I, I mean, I when I was little, like, I was always fascinated with computers. Like, I wanted to you know, build them and do stuff like that. And like, you spend all these hours learning all these skills, you know, living and sometimes, uh, you know, like a nerd lifestyle, using the air quotes here, is a little bit more socially isolated because what you're doing is inherently not that social most of the time. So what you're, what you're doing here with articles like this is you're dismissing all the hard, all the hard work, all the hours, all the intelligence and everything that goes into learning how to do that kind of stuff. And you're just saying, well, Anybody can do it, and you know, people don't need to be like that in order to do it. And it's it's arrogant. It's un, it's anti intellectual. It has it, it per, to me it betrays. So to me that says you just don't know what you're talking about. And it's I think it's offensive. So yeah, I mean I'm not offended by I'm not offended by much. I just think well I mean I, I'm not like I don't sit around and like you know I don't it's not like micro aggressing me. But at, at, <laughs> at the end of the day <laughs> you can't even say that without laughing. But at, Laughing, laughing, yeah. At the end of the day, I think the author is ignorant and wrong. That's it. That's that's yeah. all there is to it. The author lives in their own little bubble, and they're projecting. Yeah. So there's another another point of it, and it says one example, and I'm sure you're already like you're just gonna be like, yeah, of course. One example is a distinction between front end engineers who build the parts of a product that users interact with, and back end engineers who work on behind the scenes systems like data storage or scaling. I'm, try, I'm like trying not to laugh while I say this because it's so stupid. <laughs> There's a bias that front-end engineering, which generally pays less and has more women, is less technically difficult. People who have done both say the skills are different but equally challenging and valuable. Like, okay. I mean, front-end, en- like, de- depending on, it just depends on what you want to do. Like, s- like, somebody who's more of a nerd, and I'm, again, using air quotes here, is probably... They probably grew up and like spent more time doing the back end stuff because that's just the I mean that's just what their interests are. I mean, who cares like who does what? Like what? I mean, a lot of people are obviously going to be more interested in a, like the visual side of things, right? Like everybody is like cares about like if you pull up the Airbnb app, you don't think like mm, wow, I wonder like how they scale that app. Like I wonder you know if they're using. I don't know, Cassandra is a back end, or I wonder if they're using Hadoop. Like, you don't think about that kind of stuff. You think, oh, wow, this is a great interface. If you have a, if you have a multitude of people, everybody's looking at that front end, like, of course, there are going to be more people who want to do that job, and there will be more people who, like, so there's just going to be, like, you have more people, so you can just pay them less. I mean, it's not a, it's not because they're women. Like, that doesn't have anything to do with it. So, so first of all, my, bi- my big problem is they're, they're conflating designers and developers. They're grouping front-end developers and front-end designers together. Right, which are totally different things. And this is why there are more women, because there are, it's, it's not even that there are necessarily more front-end developers who are women. There might be. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case, because, just because they tend to be younger. Front-end, yeah. front-end designer, or developers tend to be younger. But designers, that's a completely different field. That's art. Exactly. That's yeah. that's that's putting that's putting colors together. That's doing like, you know, saturation, balance, that kind of shit. Exactly. That's yeah. you know, taking You're these, looking you're coming up with icons, like you're you're, coming you're doing up scripts, like or uh, sorry not scripts, fonts, like font type like all that kind of stuff. It's completely different work. Yeah. And I'm going to say this. Doing design work is A less nerdy and B easier. Like just just flat out. I, I have no I have no problem saying that. I, I mean I, I certainly think it's less nerdy. I don't know if I'd say it's I I think it's not real it's an apples and oranges thing because like I can't design anything. I mean it's a completely different skill set. That's yeah. that is that is definitely the case. But c- this this conflating like design and development is is insane. Yeah. Like we're not talking about the same things. We're no longer talking about programmers. We're no longer talking about the field right. where where women are over or underrepresented. Right? That's not the case in design. You go look at like a graphic design class, 
And yeah. you're going, I mean, if, you, if you're surprised by the fact that, you know, more than half the people in there are women, then I don't know what to tell you. You, you don't understand the difference. Right, between, exactly. You know? And that, yeah, so that was the, um, you know, I, I guess the whole point of the article is like, they're basically like damning people who spend a lot of time, you know, learning how to, you know, like how many, how many front end developers, as they're called, or designers, or whatever, spent, how many of them want to spend time learning, like, you know, how to assign variables and memory addresses or, you know, whatever randoms kind of stuff. Like, they don't care about that. They just want to make good, they, they want to make good looking products that people use and that, and that's good and that's fine. But I just got really annoyed at that article because it's basically saying that people like me and you, you know, you perhaps too, like I, I spent my whole childhood screwing around with computers, building computers and putting parts together and like doing all that kind of stuff. And then you're sitting here telling me that, well, you know, you're being exclusive to women and minorities. It's like, no, I'm not. Like, just because I want to sit in, you know, as a kid, I want to sit in my room and, like, play with computers doesn't mean I'm racist and sexist. It's stupid. And it just it just makes me mad that... Because, like, I read the New York Times and, like, I try to avoid those articles because I, I know that it makes me mad because it's so inaccurate and completely wrong. But, you know, every once in a while they, they creep up and I think it's relevant to the podcast. So. Yeah. So, At least the tech part of it. Yeah, I want to I want to wrap this topic up, but I do I do just last words I want to say for the third time. I think the author is <laughs> the author is just ignorant and doesn't understand the field and is not from it, right? The designer right. developer mistake is I mean it's, it's like a noob mistake. Well, it's, and, it's oh that's a that's a nerd word a noob. <laughs> yeah, so it's a noob mistake. Anybody who plays video games, right? I mean, a nerd. I mean, they, like they just over and over in the article, I think, s- signaled their ignorance. Yeah. All right, so. Anyway, time for the feature. Feature. All right, that's it. You want to lead it off? Let's move on to the feature. Let's just let's just get right down to it. Um, feature topic for today is Charlottesville. Yep. So for our listeners who don't read the New York Times or otherwise any paper don't or otherwise don't participate in society is are you, if <laughs> if you're living out in the middle of the woods right now we have some bad news for you yes. coming from Virginia <laughs> so uh, in Charlottesville Virginia there was a protest or well there was a march so they you know so you probably heard about like in South Carolina they're taking out the Confederate flags um, and things like that and they've been taking down some of the the statues from you know Civil War uh, quote unquote heroes as as they're called. I'm not making a judgment either way here. Uh, so taking down statues like General Lee, for example, and in, in this particular case in Charlottesville, that's exactly what it was. So they wanted to remove the statue of General Lee from the Confederate side of the Civil, U.S. Civil War. Right, and let's let's put a minute. Sorry, let's. I just want to be specific. The city voted. The city where the statue is being held, Charlottesville, voted to. Um, remove the statue and it's going to be taken to a museum yeah this was the city's yeah, decision that's what I was, yeah that's what i was going to say so um so there were some people who were classified uh, as white nationalists or uh people called them all you know, right K- kkk, all right, KKK, KKK you know, nazis, nazis all those kinds of things um who came out marched against this act um as as is the right i don't know if i agree with them doing that i you know I guess I'm kind of weaseling my way out of here, not really taking a side, more or less. Because uh, I have some mixed feelings on the removal of statues, not so much the, the Civil War. But So, white nationalists came out, and then, of course, uh, counter-protests, protesters came out, protested the, uh, the quote-unquote white nationalists, and then some guy from Ohio, which is why it's relevant to this podcast, although he was <laughs> from Columbus... Uh, so some guy Mo- uh, from Mommy County. Wow, from Mommy, Mommy County. County. Yeah, wherever I don't even know where that is. So I think it's like near Toledo, or something like that. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, uh, so this guy comes out and basically drives a car into the counter protesters. So the not white nationalists. He ends up killing some young woman, which is pathetic and tragic. And I, you know, I he, nobody deserves to die to protest. Right. Period. I don't care. Even if you're a KKK supporter, you don't deserve to die in a protest, you know? Like, even if you're, even if what you're saying is, like, abhorrible, and I completely disagree with it, I wouldn't ever wish death upon somebody speaking something, so. Uh, so, yeah, this guy basically drove his car into to people. I, he probably took a cue from all the terrorists who've been doing that in 
you know, places like France and stuff, but just driving trucks into crowds. And uh, he Ill- injured some people and ended up killing uh, this one one young woman, which which sucks. And her her name uh, so. Uh, her name was Heather Heyer, H-E-Y-E-R, and she was a paralegal, and she was killed on Saturday, which is uh, heart heart and prayers. Well, I don't pray, so I can't really, I mean, I can say that as a convention, but hearts and, you know, heart and prayers go out to that. I won't mention the idiot guy who drove into the protesters because he doesn't deserve to be named. Yeah, I mean, um, I, don't, I don't care either way as far as that sort of thing. If you'd rather not name, that's fine with me. Um, yeah, I just don't, I mean, I just don't see the, I mean, nobody's listening to this, but yeah, yeah I don't see the point of... Yeah, he doesn't deserve any recognition for being a jackass, so... I mean, he's he's going to get it regardless. And he's yeah. also <laughs> going to get the rest of his life in prison. That's right. that's just how this is going to yeah. go. All right, so should we talk about our thoughts on this whole this whole ordeal? Yeah, you, you can go first if you'd like. All right, so honestly, it's it's getting harder and harder to care. Because yeah. we've, seen this, we've seen this happen over and over, right? This shit happened at Berkeley. I mean... This shit happened right after Trump's presidency. Um, and I think in Berkeley in particular, you're starting to see the exact same thing that transpired here happen um, more and more frequently. You're seeing violent conflict between these, these two different groups of people. One who seems to largely be, you know, like white nationalist aligned, sort of neo-Nazi aligned, a lot of alt-right people, right? Yeah. Sort of, I mean, and, and as well as a lot of Trump supporters, right? That, that group all runs together. And on the, all the, uh, wow. on the other side, you have, like, anarchists, you have anarcho-communists, yeah. you have, like, the actual Antifa organization. Social justice warriors. Yeah, you have the the run of the mill social justice types. Although I don't know if they're they're getting in on the violence. I just, hopefully not. Hopefully nobody is. But no. But I mean, there was a, even outside of this car thing, there were there was multiple in, incidents of violence before this. Okay. There were there were people mace. There were people um, attacked with torches. Like this all happened before the car incident. Nobody's talking yeah. about it because the car incident obviously you know overwrote everything else. But right. and and this shit's been happening at Berkeley over and over too. Um, I just, I think people need to, you know, stop. Yeah. It, so Trevor, it, it's hard because I, man, it's like, so what, what I've seen, and maybe this is the perspective of some racist, sexist white guy, cause I'm sure that's what we call it. But I feel like a lot of, uh, at least like in the media, I mean, we just talked about in an article. Um, I, I feel like a lot of things are, at least, you know, with organizations like Antifa and all this stuff, um, a lot of these things, they tend to be subtractive and not additive. So what I mean by that is they they look at things and say, you know, okay, so how can we bring white guys down instead of how can we bring everybody up? And that's, that's one of the, and, you know, I guess this is a little bit different than, you know, I guess I'm getting away a little bit from the article in general, but whether it's in Berkeley or wherever, that's, that's kind of the, the general theme I'm seeing. And then in my own life, like for me, like when I, when I look around, like I'm trying to think, how can I bring everybody up? Like, I don't care what your background is, as long as you're just not a giant jerk. Like my goal the thing that I'm interested in is, is bringing everybody up. Like, I, I mean, I, at work, like that's one of the things I do. Like I, I, you know, bring in interns and stuff. I mentor them. I don't care where they're from or what their views are or whatever, but that's, that's one of the things that, that's bothering me. And I think that that's part of, uh, so, you know, if you read something like New York times, they talk about, so they'll, they'll be like, they'll publish articles. Like I saw one the other day and it was like, I don't know, the, the ego of the white man or, you know, something along those lines. And, like, yeah, some of that's, some of those criticisms are certainly fair. And there's been a lot of, you know, historically there's been a lot of institutional issues, if you will, uh, that have happened. But at the same time, all those things do is they divide people. What you should be saying is how can we bring everybody up to the same level, not how can we bring this group down to this level and that kind of stuff. And I think that's part of the, so like, if you, if you look at like, like these statues, like I don't care about General Lee. I I mean, Confederates lost, like they defended slavery. I mean, it was obviously more complicated than just defending slavery or whatever, but I mean, I think, I think, I mean, this is, this is an aside. I'm just sort of a, sort of a history guy, but like 
I think in Lee's case it was. Um, I think he was from Ohio too. Wasn't no, 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 no. Oh, no. oh I'm thinking of Sherman. Sherman was oh, from Ohio. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. who I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah Lee was from Virginia, of course. Yeah. But. So Lee's whole fucking thing, Lee's whole political ideology was like, he he would have been a Union soldier. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln asked him to be to, to yeah, lead he, the, the Union. Yeah. Had Virginia not been a part of the Confederacy. Like, the man loved Virginia. Like, yeah. Like, that was his defining characteristic, and that's right. why he, he was, you know, the the lead general for the South. Right. Because he was a great general. You know, both sides wanted him, but, like, Virginia was a part of the Confederacy. Right. Um, so I sort of understand where the uh, where the respect for Lee comes from. Um, yeah. And, and I think... And I, well, the, I think the larger point is, like, people just need to, like, step back for a minute and try to understand why somebody would think that. So if, like, you're a white guy, or even a white girl, I don't know why it's always the white guys, not white women, too, because obviously they supported it, too. Um, and you're living in Virginia, and then some, you know, I mean, yeah, this I guess the city voted for it, but, you know, there's some people who are going to feel marginalized by, hey, like, this statue's been here for however long. And to them, they're, maybe they look at General Lee as a hero, even if you fall for, like, the wrong losing side or something like that. And right. It just I, feels like, it feels like... I, th- I think people feel like their values are being taken away, even if they actually aren't. Uh, and I think that's one of the the, the sources of, of conflict here is, like, day to day, who gives a shit about, you know, Sherman or Lee or any of those guys? Like, nobody really cares day to day, but then you have this huge incident bubble up and, like, well, what's the underlying underlying problem here? And I think it's just there. Uh, there's a group who feels as though people are out to get them even if that's not the case and they're reacting to that i i also wouldn't uh i think i think you might be downplaying a little bit the uh, the the people who actually care about the historicity of it because honestly um sure yeah i mean so, I might yeah, be, yeah so like somebody like i mean i mean myself i uh i'm not particularly in favor of taking the statue down right if it was a statue of like davis sure maybe yeah um for those who don't know davis leader of the confederacy yep. um but but I think Lee is a completely different character, right? Lee is a, sort of a defining character in in American history in the way Davis never was, right? Right. I mean, he was whipping the Union's ass for a long time. Right. I mean, <laughs> so. he's he's more defining than Grant, certainly. Yeah. He's more. Def- I mean, aside from the fact that Ulysses Grant was eventually the president, right? Um, he's he's as big a h- historical figure as Abraham Lincoln was at the time, right? Which is which is huge because he's he wasn't like a politician. He was a general. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, to me, like, it, it seems reasonable if they want to take the statue down and then they're putting it in a museum. Like, I, I can handle that. That's fine. Like, I don't really... To me, that's not a not a big deal, but I think with the, the current political climate, it becomes a big deal and it, sh- it shouldn't be. I mean, well, I mean, I, I think the reason that the statue was taken down was political, and I think that causes a lot of... like that Yeah. Ca- that, that spurs a lot of controversy, right? Right. Because I'm not, I'm not a fan of making, I mean, of, you know, taking shit down we don't like because it's a political statement, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, if you, if you think about it, I mean, you should take, you should take, I mean, if you want to actually kind of be consistent here, you should start tearing down, like, the Jefferson Memorial, for example, because he owned and raped slaves. So why, why are we doing that? Or we should take MLK's name off of streets and you know, remove statues of MLK. Right. MLK, you know, considered homosexuality to be a problem of the culture of America. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, that's my larger issue with all of this is that we, it's kind of like, so it's like, so like Paul Graham, he's like, say what you, you know, there's a good article, uh, maybe we should link to it, but like what you can't say. And it just seems like right now we're living in like a moral fashion with respect to, you know, what's offensive right now, what's not offensive and, and, and stuff like that. And that, that, that's what largely bothers me about all of it. It's like, I just wish everybody would just chill out. Yeah. But... And uh, <laughs> r- real quick, we'll post the, uh, I'll po- I will post the, uh, the MLK citation on what he said, just in case, you know, anyone wants to question me on that. And I'll also post the Paul Graham article in the, in the comments. Yeah. If you don't read anything else, you should just read the, uh, the Paul Graham article just because it's really good but i think moral fashions have always existed right and they sort of define the cultural zeitgeist as a matter of fact i would argue pre-obama that entire chunk of history like ronald reagan to obama was sort of defined by ronald reagan's politics sure and i think that's i mean i think that's an example of if not a moral fashion a political fashion yeah so 
Yeah, I I mean, you know, I guess, like, going back to the protests, obviously with that one guy who's still going to remain unnamed, what that guy did is just disgusting, and it's tragic. And it sucks that, like, somebody just, they just went out to go protest that day because of something they don't believe in. And then, you know, but but the, the I think the larger problem, though, still is, like, there's it's a it's a subtractive mentality it's like we got to bring people down instead of trying and you know both i think both sides are guilty of this but people on both sides aren't trying to like include each other and bring people up and they're trying to say well this is wrong i don't agree with this and i don't like this and then but at the same time they only place these kind of standards in like for america for example it's like it's not like the people who are, let's say, um, well, either either side, it's not like either of them are like not buying clothes made in sweatshops in China or something. It's like, well, are you okay with that? And it's like, I you think, know, so they're, they're just kind of picking on whatever moral, I think either side is kind of picking on whatever moral crusade they can at the moment. And, and it's, I, it's I think part of the problem is that both, not not both, I mean, we, we talked about this last podcast, but everyone is living in a bubble right now. Everyone is living in this little bubble that's determined for them by algorithms if they communicate with technology at all. Yeah. Eric, you live in a bubble. No, I don't communicate with any of the technology. Oh, you totally do. You use Reddit. <laughs> you use, you use... At least I don't have an account, though. Fair enough. Um, but, I mean, we have, to, we have to actively try to fight it because that's where these extremists are coming from. That's why we're seeing this shit when we've never seen it before. Yeah. They're, they're being reinforced on Facebook. Facebook won't show you the opinions of people who disagree with you. Right. If, if you, you know, hate everything your grandmother posts... You know, it used to be that people complained about that shit all the time. Now they see it less because Facebook has decided people stay less. Yeah, you if they follow them and yeah. whatnot. And, and so what's happening is everyone's having their own opinions regurgitated back at them, and right. they become more and more extreme. And more and more outraged and, and everything. And so this is why, like I, I, mean, I, like I said last podcast, I'm in, I'm in favor of people talking to people they disagree with. Yeah, I mean, I have conversations with you about things I disagree with all the time. We exactly. one about we argue all the time. We just we just had a little <laughs> sort of back and forth about unions. It's yep. it's very important, and I think one thing these discussions do is they moderate people. Yeah, they both people on both sides end up closer to each other if, than when the conversation exactly. started. Like like so, me growing up, um, it's like two of my best friends are like Pakistani, for example. Like, I mean, they're not from there, but their like parents are from there, kind of thing. And you know, we like. So between the, th the three of us and then some other friends and stuff, like, we spent all of our time arguing over everything. We would just argue about all the most, whether it was mundane or, like, whatever event was going on. But at the end of the day, you know, we'd just go out and get pizza. You know, so, like, we, we spent all this time getting to empathize and, like, know these different sides of different arguments and all that stuff. And there are a lot more, like, I mean, I'm, like, what's funny is, like, I'm, the like, the liberal softy of the bunch and they're a lot more, like, hardcore... Not really, but I've you know, I've, I've he, noticed there's a there's a trend of that. Like anyone who comes from a sort of like um, country that where they left when it was under socialist rule or like communist rule. Yeah. And I'm talking about like actual like I'm not talking about like like market socialism. Yeah, you're talking about like Eastern Bloc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Russians, um, Pakistanis, depending on when they immigrated, they tend to be really conservative compared to the Amer average American person. Yeah. And I just I just noticed that interacting with the the sort of Russian community here in Columbus because my girlfriend's a part of it. Yeah, yeah, but just, you know, just in general though, I think what's it's people don't like they're afraid to talk to somebody from like the quote unquote other side. Yeah, and so they, they're afraid to engage in like an actual intellectual discussion or debate. And people get offended and like, how dare you say this and all this stuff instead of just like why out. why are you giving a platform to hate speech? That's that's something you hear a lot. Yeah. And it's like, well, one, you know, I, I, I think some of this stuff that we're talking about is probably hate speech. Um, but the, the thing is, is like, well, one person's hate speech is another person's regular speech. You know, it's like, so for example, like the Westboro Baptist Church and they go protest at soldiers funerals. I, I'm a soldier. Like, I don't really care if they do that. I think it's sick and disgusting, but you know, like yeah, they should have every right to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, what are we going to do? Just like line up a bunch of you know, soldiers and airmen and marines and sailors and stuff just go start beating them up? Like, that's not a solution. And are we going to drive our car into, like, their hate speech? Like, that's not a solution either. So, ultimately, I think... Uh, and honestly, if anyone is in favor of driving a car into the Westboro Baptist Church, people, I think I think you're a <laughs> shitty person. Yeah. And if you're in Although, I don't think you'd get too much hate from, from most, uh, from most which, of America. Which I think is unfortunate. Yeah. 
I mean, it's it's funny to like kind of joke about, but yeah, it is. I think um, I think if you drive a car into the counter protesters at this at this event, then you're a shitty person. I yeah. think if you were being you drive a car into anybody, you're yeah. kind of a bad. I mean, that's bad that's actor. sort of that's, that's sort of <laughs> the the point I'm trying to get at, yeah. and I think a lot of people disagree with that. But but I guess my final thoughts for this for this whole topic is yeah. I think. Some, I, I think you should find somebody this week that you disagree with on something, something important, or at least important to you, Yeah. and you should you should sit down and hash it out and talk with them a little bit. And Trevor, I am more than willing to talk to any proponent of car travel. <laughs> this entire, this one week, I'll put up with it, and then after that, I'm going back to my, my bubble, and I will go to my non-existent Twitter account, my non-existent Facebook account, and I will just post all the pro non-car stuff. All right. So, well, I think that's a wrap, Eric. Yeah, I am. Uh, I am tired of of time. It's been a it's been a tough week for me. So, um, yeah. So I, I, that's it for Columbus this week. I we will. I guess we hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All see right. ya. See ya.